shoot. What's up? We're back. Uh, I'm going to kind of face this way for a second because I'm going to clean up this session. Welcome back. It's Tuesday. Made it through the holidays. If you're uh, if you're tuning in, that means you made it. Good for you. Uh, we all made it too. How's everyone doing? I'm doing great. Brad, Joe, how you doing? Joe's tweaking the camera. He's always tweaking the camera right when we get rolling. I'm always monkeying with stuff, man. I'm He's doing good. Everybody, Chad's in the house as he's doing. How's everybody's? Um, How's everybody? Thing, right. Yeah. How was the holiday? Everyone made it. I'm feeling pretty good, man. I had a good. Uh, I had a good live stream the day after Christmas. I had a good Christmas. Great concert. Feeling good. We got a new camera angle tonight. Sorry, I'm just like I said. I'm going to clean up a few things over here. Just to uh, keep our session tight for tonight. Um, so yeah, we're back. We uh, didn't have our snack Saturday because I had a Soul Asylum holiday show live stream, First Avenue Main Room, the night after Christmas. It was awesome, really fun. I go this way. Um, yeah, strange to uh, strange to play to nobody and to play to cameras, but it was actually really fun, and we had really good feedback, and thought we played great, had a blast. Everyone that worked at the venue and worked on the crew and the light lighting people and camera people. Everyone did an awesome job. It looked awesome. Couldn't have been happier with it. So stoked about that. And so that's why we had no snacks Saturday. Sorry we missed you. I was going to try to go live from my phone, but it was just a busy day. Joe even reminded me. I just didn't do it. Uh, I still had snacks Saturday by myself. Oh, good. Snacks. Yeah. Oh, good. Brad did so did Brad. Brad. All right. So everyone was snacking. I think I did some dressing room snacks at some point. I had Jimmy Jones. I remember that. Yep. That was good. Yep. Little glimpse inside the rock and roll lifestyle. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I did not have to pay. Yeah, for that it. is rock and roll. Good point. Man, that is Good rock point. And roll. You're right. I did not have to pay for it. <laughs> Didn't order chips though. I kept it real. You know. Diane said the show was amazing. Who's that, Diane? Randy oh, thank you. A lot of people in the house must have seen the show. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, we had a blast. Andrew. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Anyone who tuned in, awesome. Uh, it's on YouTube for a couple more minutes, I guess. It, I don't know. It's on. It was on for 72 hours afterwards. I think it's coming down, and then I don't know what happens after that. But, yeah, if you tuned in, awesome. Thank you. I, had, I really had fun. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, and then we're back now for our Tuesday night thing. We're going to go a little bit different. A um, little bit different this week. We're going to talk about a guy named Jonah Matranga. Um, Jonah is a longtime friend of mine. I was doing the math today. I think I've known Jonah about 20 years now, uh, which is crazy, uh, but I think that's about right. I must have met him real late 90s, early 2000, somewhere right in there. So I've known Jonah about 20 years. We've played in a few bands together. We'll go through that. Um, but this year, uh, kind of after the Soul Asylum tour came to a halt, I, after talking to Jonah quite a bit off and on for a while, we had been kicking around the idea of making a record together. We played in some bands together, like I said. And he's been making solo albums before and since, and it was time to make a new solo record, and he knows that that's what I do here. And So we got to talking. The Soul Asylum tour got cut short. I came back, and we decided, like, all right, man, now's the time to do this. Uh, little did we know that the year ended up being way crazier than we would have even inspect, ins, uh, expected, sorry, booing uh, with the uh, pandemic and whatnot. But we spent the better part of the year making an album together, uh, and it's finished now, uh, fully signed and sealed, off to uh, limited edition vinyl press for for people that helped uh, with the money to get it going and helped fund the thing, which was awesome. And... Uh, yeah, it's on the way out. We wanted to dig through a song, and kind of this song came out. The songs are coming out in batches of three, right, Brad? Is kind of the idea. So the first three are out on all the streaming platforms. Brad will hook up the links. We'll get the links in there for all that good stuff. Uh, this is one of them. And this one's interesting because this is the first thing that we worked on together that was kind of like, this was the, all right, um, if we do collaborate on a record, I guess this is basically what it'll sound like, and... I think we were both pretty stoked on what it sounded like. And it evolved a little bit, but this one went through a lot of, uh, of, of recordings and demos and my original demo, and then we recorded it, and then we decided to involve some other friends of ours. Uh, we'll loop back to that. That ties into the past bands. And so this thing went through a lot. It was the first one and kind of one of the last ones I mixed because of all the stuff that happened to it. But we thought this would be a cool opportunity to kind of go into a session that's already done, so no mixing tonight. We can nerd out. If anyone has any questions, we can go through the session and 
solo things up. Maybe Jonah will go through it. Some of the interesting things about like making a record uh, together, but independently is I did a lot of work here on my own. So a lot of the stuff, if I solo it up and we go through it, even Jonah will be like, oh shit, I didn't had no idea that was in there or whatever. Cause he just wasn't, you know, he wasn't sitting over my shoulder all the time to see all the little bits or whatever, but it'll be cool to go through the session and talk to Jonah. We can talk about the song, the recording, what it's like to make a, a record uh, when your producer slash collaborators in Minnesota and you're in San Francisco and your guitar players in Los Angeles and your string arrangers in London, I believe. And I mean, there's a lot of people that contributed to this record and did amazing things that I've never even met, which is also interesting. So we can talk about that and um, yeah, just kind of dig into the song, which is called Everyday Angels. So I don't know. Do we just bring Jonah in right away? Do we play the song? I think we wait to play the song and just Jonah's here, right? Like Jonah, we do have Jonah as soon as you wanna wanna bring him in. In terms, let's of just get him. If let's just get him in here. We can play the song whenever. So yeah. if I hit input, I should hear Jonah, correct? I believe so. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I got gotcha. you. There it is. Hello, hello. Wow, nice. You hear oh, me? Oh shit. Ooh, wow, Jonas, Joe's got Jonas, you on the screen. Jonas oh, he Sink had... is a little goofy. Oh, there I am. Zoom. That's just Zoom. That's oh, I see. Jonah. Joe Dunbar just goes to Joe Dunbar. I see what happens here. Hey, dude. <laughs> oh, I can just in. That's pretty neat. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny, Jer. I, the only image I can see of you is one that I believe is delayed a few seconds. So, How many fingers am I holding up? I'm looking at my phone. <laughs> I'm looking at my phone. <laughs> There's a blank screen here and just my little face in the little corner. And then, but over here is you. Um, so, I don't know. I, we're, we're, we're connected, though. Are How are you, you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm all right. He's still Jonah. continuing to be yeah, he's, he's uh, amused, us, like, amused by 2020 me. life. Yeah. I think we're trying to figure out if maybe our audio is laggy or something. No? I no, it's not that. I feel like Jonah, are you are you listening to us on the uh, on the stream or on the Zoom call? That's the real question. We'll I'm listening on the Zoom call. Yeah, interesting. I wonder why it's so laggy then. Hmm. Okay. Because I hear that that audio coming back on quite the lag. That could be a Zoom thing too, because his is off. But here we are. Weird, whatever. There's a little, there's a little lag. It seems like between us, but we will work through it and figure it out. Um, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, right. Just more 2020. Isms. Like the local news, man. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, Bob. Uh, I'm on the scene here. Uh, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> no way. Yeah, man. I don't know. Things are good. I got through my, I was just saying, we got through the live stream, which was kind of the last real commitment after the holiday that I had for the rest of this year. And um, short of this live stream. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Things have been good. Now we're on to this thing. And this thing, oddly enough, was almost started in the, in the like, I spent so much time on your record throughout the course of this year that when it ended, it was like, uh oh, I need a new project that keeps me fairly busy like right away uh and this became yeah, that project. i miss you every day man <laughs> yeah yeah right it's like the check-in calls and the oh i gotta put tambourine on that i gotta add another guitar to this norman has a bunch of notes for that right like all that's over and i'm just pacing around my house going like i don't know what the, you know i guess i could shovel again <laughs> right yeah <laughs> But yeah, I don't. I don't know. I just watched some of that live stream. Uh, that was killer. Oh, cool, man! Thank you. I was just doing a little review yeah. myself today. Yeah, I was real. I was super happy with it. It was really fun. So, couldn't couldn't have asked yeah. for more. I don't think. I thought the little tour was yeah. cool. I, you know, there was little things that I didn't see, like during a song. I don't, you know, you probably didn't obviously see the whole thing, but later on, there's kind of this deeper cut, a song called "Gone Forgotten," and just I don't know if the camera people knew or not, but at some point while we were playing that tune they did like a kind of mosey through the venue and they landed on the prince star it was just like oh that was cool you know mm, one of those like nice. did someone, oh, see, did someone gotta, know to i gotta go that? look for that i was just looking for rockers yeah right plenty of rocker stuff in there too you know just trying to keep it moving definitely had a slight bang over the next day after not really playing any shows this year and not exactly right. being in total fighting condition you know but uh pull, 
pulled through. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, April was the last one, other than the stream, right? Yeah, it's crazy. It definitely made me miss rocking, and I, my my actually my right shoulder, my right arm, has been feeling kind of strange and sore and weak, and I think it's just because I'm used to. I should have played like a hundred shows or two hundred shows this year, right. um, and I haven't. And I'm trying to play, uh, but it's not. I don't know. It's not as much fun to like fucking scream and jump around in my living room. Yeah. <laughs> right. I know. Um, <laughs> right. I get it. So, yeah. It's hard. Yeah. It's funny. I just, I just broke this fingernail uh, at the show the other day and it's probably the first time it's been broken all summer, which usually this fingernail is never unbroken. Like right. it's, it's always messed up from playing bass or playing guitar or whatever. So it feels kind of fami- yep. oddly familiar to have this is that my tour fingernail shredded. and this is the first time Right, yeah, it's just a normal like fingernail. This is the first time in like, right. I don't know, 15, 20 years that this finger isn't fucked up right now. That's what I'm saying, right? That's the total, that's the dipstick. That's a rock and roll dipstick right there, right? As to whether or not you've been doing anything. <laughs> True. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah, so <laughs> thanks for coming on to this crazy anyway, thing yeah, let's, that let's, we're doing. I, and yeah, um, I suppose a I'm, bunch of people that. I'm fucking stoked, man cool yeah i mean it's fun for me we're doing this you know our whole thing is like this is low key anyways this is what we do brad's here my buddy joe's here who jonah and joe haven't met but you know hello hello you guys and yeah hello man yeah <laughs> brad's back on the couch he's sharing a mic with joe you know they're socially distant to an extent uh but yeah i thought it would be cool to have you on here because we've been talking about uh making records and this is the yeah. the record or the main project Short of a couple other odds and ends, this is my main thing this year, and this is your main thing this year. So, what better it thing sure to talk is. about? It just came out. Um, what should we? I kind of want to talk about how I met you real quick because a bunch of people that are watching this stream probably maybe don't know our history at all. So, yeah, I feel like let's go all the way back. You can tell that story, and then I would love to like. Yeah, play that. I don't know if, if it's easy on your end or maybe I can figure it on my end, but play that very first little voice memo demo of this song yep. because just because that was like we weren't even really like we were always in touch, but you were on tour a bunch and it was this whole different life. And I was just kind of I think I just finished my last solo record, which was around five years ago, and didn't really know what to do with these new songs. And so it's funny to hear that song like that little demo now. Um, anyway, so, yeah. um, yeah, man, let's take it all the way back, man. Tell me the tale of yeah. us meeting. I'm, I'm very, Right. Yeah. So, I mean, so I guess to fast forward, Jonah's been in bands his whole life. The first time I became aware of you was when you were in a band called Far. I think Dave, uh, showed me Far for the first time. I feel like he was hip That's to you awesome. guys before I was. Um, awesome. but yeah, so Jonah sang in that band. I was great friends with a guy named Norman who was, on the other side of the U.S. in New York, uh, playing guitar in a different band, and Far ended his other band, which was called Texas Is the Reason, ended. All of a sudden, they had a new band together called New End, E N D Original, um, New End Original, and an awesome band. I always, always loved Norman stuff. Then it really kind of brought Jonah more into my focus because anything Norman was a part of, I was going to buy anyway. So then I was like, oh shit, okay, that's the guy from Far. Now he's playing with Norman, totally connecting the dots. I think at that point I learned that you had also had a solo project and just kind of learned about your whole thing because Norman, essentially. It's all because Norman at the end of the day. The next record I think should every just be sentence called... I ever... <laughs> right, right. Every sentence I say about music is pretty much all because Norman. Right, yeah. It always ends with because Norman. But yeah, so... I became yeah. mainly aware of you because of that. You guys were touring, put out a record on Jade Tree, which was awesome. I saw you guys play here in Minneapolis at the Turf Club, I believe. Nice. Uh, I remember it well. It was a great show. Karn was there and Dave and the whole gang, I think, went to see you guys. Uh, I don't know if I hung out. I don't know if you think I really knew you yet, really, at that point, personally, other than, you know, probably just came and saw Norman and hung with him and then split right. or whatever. But Right. Yeah, and then... I love that record. Fast forward a little ways. Random phone call to Norman one day. He was on tour with New End. 
we were joking. He was like, wow, that's so funny that you call. We're in the van driving from wherever to wherever, and we were just having some strange conversation that was the, like, if I died, who would you get to replace me? And the, or the, I think Charlie, who was the drummer of that band, had just said that, and my name had just come up. Like, Norman was like, oh, I'd get this dude to Pero for sure, 100%. Huh. Uh, and I happened to call right then. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, weird. Uh, fast forward a couple more months. You guys find yourself without a rhythm section. And Norman asked me to fly out there and play a couple songs. So that was the first time we met was at a rehearsal space somewhere. I guess Weinberg's rehearsal space. Crumb or the, whoever it was. Uh, and I practiced with you guys and ended up playing drums in that band for a, a little while. And then kind of after that ended up playing with your solo project and so on and so on we played a bunch of music together uh while playing with your solo project you got a record deal with atlantic with another guy and while we were touring with your solo project the manager of that band came to the chain reaction in anaheim and saw the live show for your solo tour and was like i want that tall lanky kid to be the other guy in gratitude, <laughs> I think it was basically what happened. And all of a sudden I was getting sent demos and Hey man, when are you going to, you got to fly out here and do these three things. And next thing you know, I'm on Atlantic records too. in in a band called gratitude with Jonah singing. And, uh, and then we did that for a couple of years and got to spend Atlantic's money and ride around in a tour bus and make a life changing, <laughs> maybe not a world changing record, but a life changing record for us for sure. And the fact that, you know, we got to do the full ride with I mean, a guy like Jim yeah. Scott, uh, which we would have never had that opportunity. And that's, you know, you can't, you can't take that away, I guess. So. Yep. All because Norman. Right. All, yeah, right. All, and again, all because Norman. <laughs> but yeah, so we made a record. We did the ride. Uh, the roller coaster was fun. It came to an end. The wheels ground off. We were asked to get out of the cart so the next band could get in <laughs> and uh and that was that man you know uh and yeah. you know <clears throat> fast forward a bunch of years you and i are both still fighting the good fight however the hell we can and we're both still uh full-time musicians eking out a living and literally just hoping that uh we can sing Crazy. for our supper and keep it keep it moving and not have to not have to you know punch a clock and haven't done it yet so Yeah, I mean, refuse to thing. do that, so whatever else is going to happen is going to happen. But right, right. Ain't just, be that. Right, yeah. <laughs> for better or for worse, we are lifers, and I think we both recognized it in each other early, and uh, every year that goes by and we catch up and reconfirm yeah. that we're both still chipping away. We're both like, yep, I was right about that one, you know. <laughs> right. Often wrong, but not always yeah. wrong, you know. <laughs> this, one, this one stays true. It's true. Right. Uh, um. Yeah, it's cool. Like, I can't remember, you know, 90% of what you just told because that kind of life was extra fucking nuts. Um, so it, uh, it, it's neat hearing other people talk about that time because I was, you know, my Hannah would have been, I don't know, like closing on 10 or something around the time we met. Yeah, um, that right or right. no but even let younger, younger seven or eight yeah um, younger so right. i was trading dad duties and playing like 200 shows a year with like two different projects <laughs> yeah like... i had a thousand emails a day and a phone that never stopped ringing yeah you were off the hook around those like five or six years straight basically uh or maybe 10 frankly uh maybe 10 years <laughs> it was a <laughs> it, uh, yeah yeah pretty much pretty much I mean, far was its own ride, but certainly, I mean, yeah, 90 to 2008 was crazy. I mean, it's truly, I would say it's really 5 to 2015, like, didn't stop much. But especially 2000 to 2010 was, there's a lot going on. Right. Yeah. Right. Plus a major um, label deal. Yeah, and you were kind of there for deal. all of it, really. Like, once we, yeah, 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 wait, three bands, yeah, in those 10 years. <laughs> yeah right, right who knows man right um, yeah but yeah, yeah we, but anyway so it's cool to hear you tell the tales and it's cool thinking like all the different shit we've done just by both being lifers and being around music and and because norman yeah exactly right and then circle back to uh late last year early this year we decided like let's make another record together we think we know what it'll sound like and it sounded 
I think pretty much like that. I th- everything we hoped it would, maybe plus a little bit more, uh, because we had some great uh, uh, contributions. Plus a lot more for me. Right. I just I knew that I wanted to work with someone. Uh, I knew that I didn't want to make another record alone, basically. And this is even before all the crazy started. And it was a pretty short list because, yeah, a lot of what I do is based on feeling comfortable with people and safe with people. Um, and But I knew that you were getting real good um, as an engineer and as a producer. Um, I knew you could play all the rock instruments well. And I thought, if there's one person that I'm going to, like, shoot my shot with and try and make something more hi-fi with it. It was, it was pretty, pretty easy. I I talked to a couple of other, a couple other people, but they were all honestly like options. I was trying before I just decided, yeah, Joe's the guy for this. Um, and so it was, by the time I asked you, I was really, really hoping you'd say yes. Cause I, it's like right. I'd run out of, you know, any other, I just knew it had to be beautiful. It was going to be at some time. <laughs> right. No, yeah, man. And it worked out like, like I was saying, it worked out awesome because yep. everything kind of clamped down. We didn't know how long it was going to clamp down for, but we decided to get started finally. And we did. And then we ended up with all the time in the world to make it the way we wanted to. And, uh, and it took a bunch of time because I mean we allowed we allowed ourselves the time, but also it takes time to make a long record, a good long record, and put put a lot of effort into it and get a lot of tracks in there and know when to hold them and when to fold them and what to turn off and who to let listen to it to figure out you know if our perspective is still on point. And, yeah. Uh, and I I think we did an awesome job, man. I'm, I can't wait for it to continue to come out. So a couple songs are out now right that's how you're doing it yeah so yeah we got we got a few out uh the little everyday angels ep um and yeah we're i I just decided i wanted to do it in chunks because i i don't even know all of the why actually because norman first of all it was norman's idea just so we're clear uh and i also I think it was real nice for me to stretch out the recording process the way the year slowed down and the way time got all screwed up. And neither of us were going to be touring, so there was just a lot more space to really settle into songs like you're talking about. Right. And I think I want people to experience the record kind of the way we made it in this kind of slow process of these songs kind of finding each other, building up, and the songs, you know, with every new song that's released, I feel like the other songs sound a little bit different. And um, so yeah, we're going to do, we got the next release in, uh, first couple weeks of January. Super excited about that. And, uh, but I'm really happy with this first part and I feel like it's neat. Every day angels is the first song that you and I worked on together. Right. I think it's the first song that maybe got written all the way that ended up on the record years later. Um, right. Cause this goes back and, a ways, right? The original way back i mean the first demo i could find is from 2015 of like like right I'm gonna look. and i i feel like it, it might have been mumbled before then because the first thing i found was a tiny little yeah voice there's, memo the, there's the voice memo right which has got to be even earlier yet i would assume right right because it was already done and i know it's not one of those songs that just sort of like appeared it was definitely i'd already been working on it so there's probably even crazier stuff but that was the earliest thing i could find um so and but mostly it's cool that this is the first song that anyone's really hearing off the record because it's the first song that you really heard that ended up on the record yeah Um, first thing we worked on right i think maybe i sent you a few pick this one right yep yep we were so yeah and this was interesting because we did a demo of this uh before i went on to it i think yeah uh oh, is Joe doing stuff? I, th- I maybe caught on the stream. So, like, what, who, <laughs> tell me, finish your story, and then we'll figure out how we want to. What was I? Oh, yeah. Listen to this song? Yeah, yeah, we will, man. We will, right, man. It's like, a, it's like a sweet, sweet onion, I'm baby. Excited. We got to peel back the layers. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we made a demo. No, I didn't forget. Somehow. I don't know how I didn't forget. So, we made a demo of this, I think, before I went on tour. Then, then I came back. We decided we're going to make this record. We chopped up the demo a little bit. 
we re-recorded it and kind of started what became the album version where I played drums and bass and got the shell going. And then at some point we decided we were going to loop back in. Yep. So as I was, I think, saying earlier, or I know saying earlier, we ended up on Atlantic Records together uh, in a band called Gratitude. Uh, and on this tune, right. we decided this okay, one kind of yeah, had a... Yeah had a little bit of the feel of gratitude to us. It had that kind of, had that pop tempo. It was just reminiscent. And also when me and you play together and kind of the, some of the guitar choices I make, my sensibilities, it lends itself to, we knew where there was going to be a little, a little gratitude seasoning sauce on, on this record one way or the other. So we ended up bringing in Bob and Dave who played drums and yeah, bass. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. And so then those guys came in and play drums yeah, and bass. Yeah. So we, we re-recorded this song we should try, a million we gonna times. Try... Sorry, go ahead. Zoom lag. Oh, no, are we going to get them on tonight? Are we going to fucking call yeah, up this I don't know. Dave and fuck I, with them? I didn't really ask him. <laughs> Not that I didn't really ask him, I just didn't really ask him. I'm sure Bob's busy, right. and I'm sure <laughs> Dave is probably, like, you know, snow kayaking down some beautiful mountain <laughs> with, <laughs> with, with an eagle passing I by the moon right perfectly. <laughs> Uh, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dave's out living his best life, uh, and God bless him for it. We're sitting in a basement hanging out, talking about the records we made all year. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, and, and, and you know, talking about weird 2020 and whatever, like we made this record without being in the same room, and we worked on it for yep. the better part of a year. So how strange. Yep. Jonah cut vocals and guitars and keyboards and stuff at his house, and sent me stuff and i was mentioning earlier there's a, a bunch of people who sent in uh guitar tracks and piano tracks and keyboard tracks and string arrangements and people that i've never even met that are friends of yours that had a huge impact on the record that i worked on all year and i, I have no idea who they are you know but that's kind of the part of the new world of record making yeah. is all of a sudden i just get a folder through you that's check this out and i open it up and it's an orchestra and i'm like whoa awesome you know like that didn't that didn't used to happen before you know <laughs> pretty interesting yeah that was it was simon and jen yeah simon and jen from england were the furthest away but then on the other side you you know got uh people to play i mean well you know i never saw dave or bob um Right. Bob sent his tracks from San Francisco. Right. Dave came over. That was you, one of the since, times that there was two people in the same room making your record. Right. Ian right. Prince came over. But short right. of that, that's about it. That's yep. about it. Zach from Jimmy Eat World. Zach Lind played drums down at his house. Yeah. Um, Rod Castro from Los Angeles, right? Rod's in the chat. Yep, Chris. Oh, Rod's in the Chris, chat, Brad uh, said. Chris Dashboard flew in vocals from Chris, where does he live in Tennessee that's or some right. shit. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, he he recovered enough to contribute some vocals. God bless him for being able to do it. I, I know he's having a, yeah. sounds like a hell of a go. Sounds like a hell of a fall. Hell, one of the reasons I decided I didn't need a motorcycle anymore, literally. Like, yeah, man. You know, he on yeah. top of another friend and just enough stories. Last year, I rode my bike around a lot, and I heard just enough of that to be like, Whew, as fun as this is, I don't know, you know, so. Yep. But yeah. Yep. Thank God he's feeling better. So wait, what do you have on that fancy screen there? Do you got to do something else? Oh, I don't know. Joe, screen. I mean, Joe is, Joe is Oz over there. He's, he, he sparks it up and okay. uh, hits All the right. switches and I don't know what he's doing. What, what would you like I'm to see? I can, right, I can, uh, I can try to request something or he uh, can hear I just, you. I just get excited when I see the little mixing board and I saw a little waveform. I, yeah. I, I just wanted to hear whatever that was. Oh. So, so hold on. So I don't, Jonah, I don't know, man, what kind of the, the leg going back to you, I can't figure out. It seems to be a zoom thing, but it's getting so, better. Yeah, okay. It, on our end, everything's cool and looking great, so thanks for bearing with it. I thought, sure. as we talk about this song, um, I'd love to hear you guys kind of, you know, as you continue to talk through the demo process and stuff, we have Pro Tools in the session for this song pulled up right now. Right, I've um, got your voice right? memo is with the thing that you saw. Yeah, and so I don't, I mean, you guys reveal this, you know, and, and let's. I'd love to give it a listen at some point, but I want to get there, and, and yeah, so we'll pull that up when, when, that, when we get there. That's the move. That is the move. We'll pull that up when we get there. Thanks yeah, for chiming for me, in, Joe. I mean, I could tell. 
Sorry, John. I, I could tell stories and hear stories uh, forever with Jer. Um, right. A lot of times we would just like, you know, talk our way through sessions when we should have been working on shit. You know, so I could do that forever. Right. Um, right. Uh, I mean, I'm. You know, it's, it's funny, man. As we've been learning too, as we're doing this thing, I like Oz. Right. <laughs> Oz hitting switches. <laughs> yeah. Nice. We've been learning as we're doing this, like you know, it's yeah. about Pro Tools and behind the song and all this stuff and. I'm definitely nerding out and in Pro Tools often, but we're also noticing that people are watching and most interested when, like, we're just hanging out and talking, and it's a little more podcasty. We get into Pro Tools a little nice. bit, but, like, people like the laid-back thing. But, yeah, I mean, we've been... We've probably got a little bit... Enough of a catch-up at this point, right, that, I mean, maybe before we go into the final song, should we go into... I have... I mean, we don't have to listen to the whole thing, maybe just a a quick bit of what looks like your first voice memo. So probably lyrics yeah. or guitar and... Yeah, let's listen to that first voice memo. Just hear how different it is. I don't know if you've even heard it, but yeah. Yeah, I got it here. I'm going to open it up. I believe that when we play this, the stream will lose me and you, uh, but they will okay. just they will just hear this. I'm not sure what you will hear or how that works. You hear this. I don't know how All right. Oz knows, right. This is a voice memo, so it won't be super loud for uh, people that are watching and for just everyone involved. But yeah, so original iPhone, get it down so you don't lose it in the ether demo of Everyday Angels. Recorded, it looks right. like uh, early 2015, or at some point in 2015, I believe. Crazy. So yeah, let's check this out. That lost or wandered way too far from home Or if you ran away because of something there I'm sending this out to you from all of us that knew you I'm worried that you're going way too fast and to nowhere no matter who you aren't or are What you did or didn't do Know that you are loved No, it's not too late You'll get tired Stay inspired We go up in an ocean of stars Back to the magic we are we are angels, we are angels I am yours and, and you are mine Always falling, always flying Always angels So yeah, verse and a chorus, you know, gets the uh, yeah, gets the vibe. Nice. Key stayed the same, I yeah. think, right? Or did it come um, down? Pretty much, you know. There, Maybe it you stayed know, the same. Little little note choice changes, but that was that part is pretty much the only part that really for me changed structurally between that and the real like the first demo that I sent you was I had a whole other middle eight thing. I didn't have the halftime thing in the middle eight. Right, it right. Just, it kind of, it, yeah, it kept going. And I was, at the time, I was actually dreaming of it as this big choral song. And so I had a, um, there's a little instrumental demo that where I, I mapped out the whole vocal melody on, right. uh, you know, plunking it out on the keyboard. I got that. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit of that next. We'll go right through the levels. I guess we kind of have three levels. Cause right. Yeah, let's do the yeah, let's do the levels like you know, kind of what. Let's do them in like a little quick time lapse, then we'll get into the real thing. Because I just want to like for people to see where it was right fresh out of my brain, right. And then after I'd worked on it for a little while, but then after you got your hands on right. it, you know, right, yeah. right. So yeah, so we just heard the original a little bit of the first verse and chorus of uh, original voice memo, 
And now it looks like we got uh, November 2015. You did, looks like just a track to get a track vibe down. No vocal on this one. Um, right. But you were probably getting ready to f finish off lyrics and whatever else and just get a feel for it. So let's just listen yeah, to I, a little bit of this. I right? think where, yeah, I think where this one was was uh, one of the, uh, I worked with a guy called Brad Wood on an early Far record and he taught me to play my vocal melodies right on the keyboard before i would sing them to make sure i really knew what the melody i was singing right and so i think since then i've done this exercise where after i've kind of written a vocal i'll make myself plunk it out and i'm not a good piano player sure so i have to really go slow but it really makes me think on the melody and makes me get committed to it so this is what you're gonna hear right smart um maybe i'll i'm gonna cut through like half of this intro i don't remember yeah, yeah, if this whole yeah. thing but yeah so no vocal, but yeah, like Jonah said, piano melody, little track vibe, little programming, just trying to get a feel for what it would be like if it wasn't just acoustic guitar and vocal. So then we have this one. Let's go up a little closer here. trying to like arrange those voices in the chorus the la, da, da, right yeah like i was trying to get the harmonies going yep um and uh and hey on that one if you can hit like near the end of the track sort of like midway because i just want people to hear for a second I'll turn down like the what the bridge was gonna be and it's a little weird sounding but i think it's kind of neat too and it's cool because it ended up so so different so see if you can jump in like midway to the outro let me see if i can find it here yeah, see what you got. Not sure where I'm looking for exactly yet here. Let's see if I can um, find it. Oh, I think when I solo zoom, I don't hear Jonah either. Is that what happened? Yeah. It's got to be here ish. Seems like the last right chorus. Right after that. Is that after that last chorus? Right after that, that chorus, yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever heard that. No, you haven't. It, that was like, and so all those weird little counterpoint things are these different sort of voices I imagine singing different bits, and it would sort of uh, coalesce on, we are angels. Right. So that was like the first like look at what I thought a bridge would be. and then But then by the next demo that I actually sent you, I had changed that. So, yeah. Right. So then, yeah, it looks like we fast forward like two years to your next demo. <laughs> That just, sounds about right. For dude, me. I, I get it. I've got, I still have demos. I'm like, I'll finish that one of these days. They're 15 years right. old now or whatever, right? But yeah, I suppose, like, let's just peek at that and see where it, it was. This is labeled October 2nd, 2017. Yeah, man. Let's see what it was doing. My bad. Clumsy, cool. clumsy Pro Tools are on my end. Well, let me let me do this right here. 
If you got lost in wonder, way too far from home, or if you ran away because of something there, I'm sending this out to you. If you're lonely or you're scared, or worried that you're going way too fast or to nowhere, no matter who you want to run, what you did or didn't do. So th- that was probably, the, yeah, that was kind of demo number three. Yeah, yeah if, you know, we don't want to count the voice memo as a demo. So demo two, um, maybe. Hit, 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 the, uh, hit the new middle eight on that. Like after that second chorus again, I just want people to hear how, how that changed and then how much more it changed from you got to do it. So you can you can hear in that one pretty similar, a lot of elements. Like, yeah, I mean, so but I'm still trying. At that point, I was thinking of this of doing the record in a similar way I had done my last solo record, which is kind of a home kind of Casio thing. And but even by the time of the, I got to the end of that demo, I was just yearning for rock drums. Right, and right, it's right. Just funny to hear it going that or the song just pushing for that approach um because i really tried to do it in sort of more like a four on the floor kind of thing and sure. so it's it's neat like hearing that and then of course you like did exactly what i was hearing in my head which was the best nice yeah yeah man yeah so then yeah so we took the demos we chopped them up i changed a couple chords not much we did a little back and forth about lyrics and which verse should be which verse Right. Joe right. Dunbar said he's got a lot of questions. He needs to know more about who's Molly, who's Holly, what's the deal. <laughs> I mean, I do have a I lot of questions. That. He's always got Molly. questions, you know. Certainly, he doesn't have any answers. I know that much. But uh, well, so I can I can actually answer the the Molly Holly thing pretty quick. Um, there. Uh, You're welcome, Joe. <laughs> um, so. It's actually kind of a, kind of an intense story. Um, so I heard I, I sing at a place called Glide, which is this rad social justice organization, and I, I'm I'm part of the choir there. And uh, at one time, when I was at Glide, someone was telling the story of a trans person who was uh, from Texas, um, who had come out to San Francisco, kind of looking for a new life, um, and uh, did not, uh, did not succeed in finding that, um, and ended up taking their life off, off the Golden Gate Bridge. Wow. And, and so I kind of juxtaposed that story with, uh, you know, the, one of the more famous trans characters in pop music, um, Holly came from IMAFLA, 
from Walk on the Wild Side. And so I was sort of imagining if Molly had found a group of awesome people like Lou is talking about in that song. Mm -hmm. And so the Molly could have been like Polly, but she was from Texas, not Miami. Um, and, <laughs> right. and just really telling that story, you know, and, and referencing one of the, one of the great early trans representations in pop music, really. Right. Nice. That's fucking sweet. Right. That's a better, <laughs> that's a better story than you expected, huh, Joe? That's, that's, <laughs> that's what you get. There story. you go. That's what you get, man. Yeah. See? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, so, and yeah, and then I took the song and kind of ran bonkers with it. You probably reeled me back in, and then you probably went bonkers with it, and then I reeled you back in. That seemed to be yeah, how, think, how we I did it. I don't think, hold on, I don't think I ever reeled you in. You did a great demo. Mm, true. I then went bonkers with it because you gave me new ideas, and so I tried a shit ton of them and threw them at you, and then you reeled me in. <laughs> and, right, and we basically right. went back to your approach that you had done first. <laughs> Um, and, sort of and so I just wanted to be real with all the people of the universe yeah, because uh, well, it I, was you doing all of the real, I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, right. It's, I mean, uh, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Jonah sends me a demo. I do my thing. I send it back to him. It opens these doors in his brain, yeah. uh, <laughs> which allow a fucking lot of ideas through, which he sends back to me. And some of them are great and some of them are too much. And then it's like, yeah whoa okay now we gotta now we gotta figure it out and only a couple times did we put too much stuff on and then take it back off we were pretty smart about it but for the I most part we figured yeah, it out once in a while i would actually say to you hey like i love this but let's peel back a few of those layers and see what else is there i just kind of wanted to hear it and then and then because there's so much on certain parts of this album i wanted to kind of use those as these sort of blast moments and then pull it way back and right. sort of do the dynamic right. that way. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. It was, it was interesting. I, like, I feel like I policed you as far as what stuff ended up in the record, but then you, you ended up policing me at the end as far as kind of how to turn, when to turn down the stuff that I left in there. Uh, yeah. Like you would, yeah, right. you definitely policed I, me on keeping my chord changes simple right. and on my vocal melodies simple and not getting too lost in things and then yeah you would stack a bunch of shit up and then i would get to come in and kind of peel stuff back for the verse but then we'll leave it in for the chorus yeah and right so we did have two these two different roles that we played that's true that's a cool that's a cool thing yeah yeah right it's in, it's interesting how that happened it's like all right now i got everything going you're like cool now turn a bunch of that off in the bridge and then bring it back up and then turn it up super loud and like you know let's Let's squeeze a bunch of dynamics out of it. And some tracks, some tracks we had a lot more than others. This one's pretty traditional. I mean, you know, I put a pile of guitars on here, uh, but not a not a whole bunch of extras. No orchestra. No, you know, no kitchen sink. But there is a bunch of pianos. There's some strings. There's some keyboards. There's some synthesizers. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some stuff Simon, we can go who through. usually who usually does all the orchestral stuff, um, he did send a lot of that but it didn't work for this song right and jen sent some great vocals but they didn't this by that point that this song had become a pretty sort of yeah meat and potatoes rock tune in a great way and your your guitars and your bass and your synth had kind of like given had filled up the room real nice but then simon had this piano that i don't think i even sent it to you at first because i thought oh, i don't i don't hear this but then I did, and you placed it. And when you placed it, and I thought, man, this is a spice that, that the tune really needed. So yeah, it was interesting because uh, so, we wanted it. We wanted yeah. that gratitude thing, but then I feel like right, even right. just the Simon right. piano brought. We kept the gratitude thing right where we wanted it. Simon pulled it back onto your record, like he kind of tied yeah, it, it back kinda, together. Yeah, or Simon something. became this thing which I love in rock records. I think of like every little thing she does is magic. I think of some of the Beatles stuff. I think of some of the Stone stuff where, or the Who as well. They didn't have a piano player in their band, a keyboard player necessarily in the band. Right. Um, but there were these moments of piano. Uh, and so I love that Simon basically sat in with us, sat in with Gratitude, because Gratitude certainly never really had a piano that sounded like this in our music. Um, but it worked perfect. It's totally a guitar and bass drums, rock and roll tune. But I like that it has that 70s piano banging away like it was on yeah, a man. lot of those tunes back then. Yep. 
I just go Benmont every time. Anything rock and roll, well, any any keyboard I mean, instrument, I just think Benmont, right? <laughs> he's just there's. I mean, he's, he's a king. he's a whole other animal. He's just right. a superhero. And I mean, I know for both of us, especially myself. I mean, I speak for myself. I'm sure you'll say the same. But Tom Petty and Wildflowers, and back to Jim Scott and our experience with yeah. him. That was a huge. I think that was a huge part of this record too, as we wanted to shoot for a sonically uh, something similar, something now, but something uh, that also has a lot of those similar elements in, in the structure of the, you know, percussion or just the, the way the guitars are and less distortion. And we're we're grown up now, so we want things yeah. to be a little more clear. And I mean, there's there's certainly angry moments. There's a B side that's plenty angry on this record. Uh, well, and this this tune this tune actually you know this tune gets pretty muscular, and there's some definitely moments on the record. But yeah, I think we've all learned at this point that just turning the distortion way up doesn't make for an impactful rock song. It just it's all about as you know so beautifully and as you do so beautifully, like the kick drum and the bass and the guitar sound are what what I think people mistake for just turn up the distortion a lot. It's got to all work together. And so I remember talking about Tom Petty for sure. I remember us talking a lot about wanting some of the elements of Wildflowers and some of the elements of Full Moon Fever, which are incredibly different records. But we talked about like sort of Jeff Lynn versus Rick Rubin. And, and on the Gratitude record, I thought that we, like, I thought that Jim Scott made that record just so much better than it ever would have been without him, for sure. And I, and then even, you know, in Gratitude, I don't know if you want to mess with this, but, like, you can hear Gratitude change from being with Jim Scott to the one tune with John Fields, 100%. which is a little, and I think this record is kind of in between those two approaches of rock and roll. Like real dry and simple, but with a little more sass and flash. Yeah, man. Sorry, I've double double looking here. I think. Oh no, you're all good. Joe's telling me we gotta maybe restart. There's something going on with the stream. Yeah. So we'll come. We'll just we'll be back in two seconds, and we'll dive into that. Maybe that. I guess we got. Track. I guess we got a two minute break. We lost it at some point. Yeah. All right. 